In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the assembly drawing packet for lathe project number two. The first step is to draw all of the parts and go ahead and assemble all the parts in an assembly. Once you have both the assembly and the solid part files together in one single file, you can go ahead and start to create the assembly drawing. So notice we have four part files and an assembly file here. So to create the drawing, we're going to go File New. We're going to select Drawing. Press OK. Now we're going to select our drawing template. If you have only show standard format selected, you will be unable to see the custom template you imported in previously in the quarter. Go ahead and select IME 144 drawing template. Remember, this template can be downloaded off PolyLearn and inserted into the templates. When I press OK, you'll see the model view option becomes loaded for me automatically, allowing me to hit browse and select the part model or the assembly model I'd like to create a drawing view off of. At this moment, I'm going to hit X and talk about a few things before we insert model views. Now, looking at our drawing, we have the title block set up, and we're going to go to the View Layouts tab and first create views in our blank title block right here. Now, I like to go ahead and fill out the date, the title, and the material before I start drawing. So before I use the View Layout tab, I'm going to go over to the Annotations, click on the Note tool, come down, and title this Lathe Project Number 2 Assembly. Then in the material, I'm going to write not applicable in A for material. It's going to be multiple materials in the assembly. And on the date, I'll put today's date, 10, 15, 18. In order to end the note tool, press escape. You can grab the notes and align up this text exactly the way you want to see it in the title block. Now that the title block is fully filled out, we're ready to start adding views. We go to the View Layouts tab on the top ribbon bar, and we access the Model View tab in order to insert an assembly drawing, or an assembly model into our drawing. At this point, we're going to hit the Browse button, and we're going to select SLD ASM, or the assembly file we created in the previous video, and press Open. At this point, it allows us to either A, show it in an assembled view, or show it in an exploded state. We're going to keep it in the assembled view for right now, and I'm going to show you the differences after we place the view. Moving down, the orientation, I want just a pictorial view of my assembly. So I'm going to pick the pictorial view and not select create multiple views in this step. Moving down a little bit farther, I want to show only visible lines in my assembly drawing in the pictorial view, so my hidden lines will be removed, and I want to use a custom sheet scale of 1 to 1. When I'm happy with everything, I click on the screen and it places the drawing view. Well, looking back at the drawing view provided for you, you'll see that it's shown in the exploded state. So when I move back to SolidWorks, notice when I click on the drawing view in the model view tab, you'll see it says show an exploded model or break state. Well right now it's in the assembled state, the default assembled view. If I click on this, it allows me to show the exploded view that I created in the assembly environment in the previous video. So this model, we're going to go ahead and show it in the exploded state. So once we access the exploded state, we're going to hit the check mark. Now the whole purpose of an assembly drawing is show how the assembly fits together or how the parts fit together in the assembly. So to do that, we like to go ahead and show exploded views and then actually number our parts with balloons and insert a parts list so we know exactly what we're dealing with in terms of part numbers and then the names of the different parts. In order to insert a parts list and balloons on our different parts, we have to go to the annotation tab at the top here. So on the top ribbon bar, 
click on annotation and then over in the table section I'd like you to click on bill of materials the bill of materials tool allows you to select a drawing view by clicking on it and then it'll go ahead and create a standard bill of materials you can go through and change the different features within the bill of materials here on the left hand side in the design tree but for right now I'm gonna hit check mark and place my bill of materials moving back to the engineering drawing you were provided you'll see you were given an item number a part number a description and a quantity moving back to SolidWorks you'll see that by default it gave us a part number an item number and no description at this point. If I were to fill out the, feed, the part properties in the part environment, a description can actually be populated in the bill of materials. However, we did not do this. Therefore, we're simply going to double click and keep the link and type whatever we want in the description. So, lathe project number two shaft. design part. Double click in here, keep the link. The part number two is bushing. Part number three, keep the link, is fender washer. And part number four, keep link, is a 5-8-11 UNC to be hex nut. At this point, we created the bill of materials, an exploded assemble view. The only thing we're missing are the balloons to identify each item number. In order to apply the balloons, we go back up to the annotations ribbon bar tab and select balloon. Now I simply click on the part and drag the balloon off and SolidWorks automatically orders the parts in the same order you see them in the bill of materials above. And this will complete our assembly drawing with bill of materials or parts list and the balloons. Now you're saying, is this all? No, an assembly drawing just simply shows how all the parts fit together in the design. After the assembly drawing, we're going to want to go ahead and insert another sheet into this same file. To do that, I can go down to the bottom where it says Sheet 1 and click Add Sheet. In fact, I'm going to add two more sheets. We're going to create an assembly drawing packet here. So first sheet, Sheet 1, if I right click and I rename it, I could call it EXPLODE Explode Assembly, A-S-S-Y. Then sheet number two, if I right click and I rename it, I'm going to call it shaft drawing. Then sheet number three, I'm going to rename that one. I'm going to call it standard parts. So I've got three drawings here. Notice in our drawing packet we were presented in the lab manual, we have an exploded assembly view at shaft design drawing. Then I went ahead and I laid out drawings for each individual part that was a standard part. In reality, you're not going to draw and dimension the standard parts your company uses. You're just going to identify them on some sort of standard part sheet and how to purchase them and the important details pertaining to each part. So let's start off with the standard part sheet. I need to put the three parts here, part number two, three, and four, on the standard part sheet. I do that using the View Layout tab and the Model View. I simply hit browse and I lay out the part in a pictorial view using the model view button. So I'm going to lay out first the unthreaded spacer, open. I'm going to show that in pictorial view, dragging down. I'm going to use a custom scale of one to one and I'm only going to show visible lines. Places the one part there. Check mark. Now the standard part sheet is really the only drawing sheet that has multiple parts on one sheet besides an assembly drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit model view a second time, hit browse, and place the stainless steel fender washer 
pictorial view of this by clicking pic isometric, hidden lines removed, custom sheet scale of one to one, and we'll place that on the drawing sheet. Now last but not least, we'll go ahead and hit model view a third time. We'll hit browse. We'll select the grade five steel hex nut, select open, we're going to select isometric view, visible lines only, and a custom scale of one to one. At this point I place the drawing view and I hit check mark. Now my standard part sheet has three of my standard purchase parts on it. Now in order to identify these purchase parts, I like to put a balloon with the part number on it. So when I click on balloon, I'm going to go ahead and put item number and we'll go ahead and and put the balloons with the item number identifying the part. Now what some companies like to do, they like to add a note and they like to go ahead in the note and identify the part, maybe the part number and then the quantity. So I can write nylon bushing supplier master car part number this is where I have to go to my previous drawing I'm going to go ahead and populate the text boxes out there and change the name There we go. Now, real quick, I'm going to go back to the original drawing and look at these part numbers. And I can control C, move back over to my standard parts sheet, double click in here, control V, go back to my exploded assembly, double click the part number, don't show again and keep the link. I can actually control A, control C, Go back to my standard part sheet. Control V and copy and paste and all the Windows commands work in SolidWorks. So one more time, double click, Control A, Control C, click out, back to standard part sheet, double click in there, and Control V. So a lot of the times your standard part sheet will give you just a pictorial view of the part, a number pertaining to the actual part number in the bill of materials on the first page and then any pertinent information needed to order the part. At this point, in order to finish the standard parts drawing, I'm going to use my note tool to apply the date. I'll move over here, type NA or not applicable for the material. And the title will be Lathe Project Number two, S T A N D A R D, standard parts. So at this point, we've created a standard part sheet and then an assembly drawing. Now, the only part left is the detail drawing. So when I move down over here, I need to place my lathe project number two detail drawing on my shaft drawing sheet here. To do that, I go to my View Layout tab. In the View Layout tab, I'm going to select Model View. I'm going to hit Browse, and I'm going to select the shaft that I designed for the first section of this project, or the first portion of this project. When I press Open, I'm now going to select the views. I want the front, I want the ISO, I'm going to hit create multiple views, so I want front and ISO. Moving down, 
I want visible lines only for this po at this point. I'm going to use custom scale one to one, and I'm going to hit check mark. What that does is it places a pictorial view in the upper right corner, and then gives me a nice view, front view of my lathe part the, or the shaft design project number two. So when I move over to the engineering drawing and I look at this one, you'll see that the scale is actually three to two for the, for the lathe part. So what I can do is I can move back over to SolidWorks. I can right click and go to the properties. And I'm gonna change the scale to three to two. Apply changes. Now what that does is it changes it on the title block only. At this point, I have to click back on the drawing view, go to custom scale, I'm going to pick user defined 3 to 2. What that does is it places the drawing view at the appropriate scale. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to the annotation menu to finish dimensioning this part before we create the detail view. So in order to add a center line, we click on center line, we click on this line and this line. What that does is it makes a center line across the, between those two lines. So then I click on the center line and drag it out past the edges of the part. And check mark. Now let's go back and look at the engineering drawing. You'll see we have to create this detail drawing now that we created our center line. Then we can start dimensioning the different pieces. At this point, we'll move back to the SolidWorks drawing and we'll use our smart dimension tool to dimension the diameter. Notice this needs to be three places. We are going to dimension then two other diameters. Looking back at the drawing, so we gotta take this detail view and then we're gonna dimension these diameters up here. So let's go back and do the detail view like I said a minute ago. I got sidetracked. So back to view layout, we're going to select detail view. This is very easy. We go in, we zoom in with our mouse, and we select the center of the circle where we want to create the detail off of. We click our mouse button and we move the detail view up to the top of the screen. So you'll see this is a three to one scale. Moving back, we have a four to one scale on the, the one that we were given. So when I go back to SolidWorks, notice the scale for the detail view is at the moment user defined, and we could go ahead and pick four to one and place that view. At this point, we want to go ahead and move our detail view text up a little bit. And let's go back and see what other dimensions we need to place. Looking at the SolidWorks drawing, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to place L1 and L2 and show you how to specifically pick a certain dimension. Now realize my numbers are going to be off compared to your numbers because it's your job to go ahead and design this part and put the appropriate tolerances on based off your design from your allowance and clearance calculations. So my numbers are going to be slightly different at this point from here on out. But realize you need to put in the correct numbers based off the calculations and the standard parts tolerances along with the allowance and clearance calculations. Remember we came up with that together in lecture number six. Actually lecture number five, sorry. So here we go. I'm going to first start placing the diameters in the detail view. So I'm going to do diameter three and diameter two before I come back to this drawing. Looking in SolidWorks, my diameter three and my diameter two are going to be right here. So when I grab my annotations menu, or ribbon bar, I select smart dimension, and I grab that line to show off the diameter. Now notice, this diameter should probably be three decimal places. And also, it probably has a tolerance other than what's stated in the title block. So if we have to apply a tolerance directly to a dimension, we go over to the left, we first actually click on the dimension and go over to the left where it says tolerance slash precision. In order to apply a plus minus tolerance that's symmetric, it's basically a bilateral symmetric tolerance, 
we click on symmetric and we type in the exact value for example plus or minus eight thou and it'll go ahead and put the tolerance directly on the dimension now realize yours is not eight thou use your design dimensions or your design calcs to figure out your tolerances now the next diameter we've got to do is this small diameter right here so when I bring that in move it out you'll see this one's going to be three decimal places I'm not quite sure the tolerance on this one but I'm going to show you how to make it a limits dimension if needed let's say 492 is our target dimension and if I wanted to display a limits dimension I could click on limit and give it the upper value of the tolerance and the lower value of the tolerance. What that does is it sets up a limits dimension based off your tolerance right here in the plus and minus values. Showing you different ways to apply the tolerances. Now before we go on, let's go ahead and look back at our drawing. I'm going to show you, whoops, I'm going to show you how to create an angle now in a distance. So notice the angle is off this line and that line. It's actually the angle of the thread relief tool we'll be using to make a groove in our part to relieve the protrusion for the threading tool. So moving back to SolidWorks, I'm going to grab my Smart Dimension tool. I'm going to grab this vertical line and then this line, excuse me there, press Escape and Control Z. Back to Smart Dimension, you grab this line and that line in it swings an angle off of the two. 30 degrees. Now notice my dimensions outside my tile block. That's a no-no. So I'm going to drag my detail view back in so I don't have any of my dimensions extending outside my tile block. The next dimension I saw was the, the 90 thou dimension. So if I dimension from here to that edge you'll see that we've got 90 thou. Now last but not least, if we go back to the SOLIDWORKS drawing, we've got a dimension L3's distance right here. So to do that, that's pretty straightforward. We're going to dimension that line to that line. And there's my L3 value. Sometimes you got to play with your dimensions in order to make them look good. Play with their, where they're located. Now if this one was more than two decimal places, which I believe it is, you can go three decimal places. And if we wanted to make it uh, bilateral, I could have it go three thou one way and two thou the other way. So that would be how you would create a bilateral, an unsymmetric bilateral tolerance. So remember, there's none, which doesn't apply a tolerance directly to dimension. There's a basic dimension, which would put a box around it, and there's no tolerance for G, D, and T. There's bilateral, which gives you plus and minus values that are different. There's limits, which just set the limits up based off the tolerance you apply. Then there's symmetric, and then there's the max, the min, don't worry about these. We're going to basically only apply none, a basic dimension, bilateral, limit, or symmetric. So I'm going to show this one off with the bilateral. Okay. So this view is actually fully dimensioned. So I'm going to drag the view down so that all the dimensions are inside the title block and move the detail over. Looking back at my engineering drawing, I have fully dimensioned this entire detail view. So now we're going to move on to the chamfer dimension, the linear dimensions, and then this last diameter up here. So to do that, let's move down here, back to SOLIDWORKS, and let's do a chamfer dimension. Remember, chamfer dimension is right underneath smart dimension under chamfer dimension. When I click on chamfer dimension, I measure the hypotenuse to the leg. Right there. What that does is it places a chamfer on my drawing and allows me to, I can now modify the amount of decimal places. And if I want to go ahead and show that there's two of these chamfers, 
I move down to my dimension text down below. Anything inside the carrots, the DIM, is pulled directly from the solid model. But I want to add a prefix to the dimension, therefore I put my cursor in front of the first caret, type 2 and uppercase x, space. What that does is it says 2 by 0 0.075 by 45 degrees. That's letting me know that there's a chamfer not only on the back side, there's also a chamfer on the front side before the thread starts. At this point, let's go ahead and do one more linear dimension. I'm going to measure smart dimension from this back edge to the front edge of the part, giving my overall dimension of my part, 4.0. Moving back to the engineering drawing, you'll see that's plus or minus 10 thou, which looking at the two place decimals, they're plus or minus 20 thou on this drawing. So we're going to put 10 thou directly on the drawing. Let's go back and fix that just like you see on the drawing. So when I move back here, I do 4.0, I grab my symmetric, and I give it a 10 thou tolerance. Now the problem with this is the 10 thou tolerance in the title blocks the same thing as right here. Therefore, we want to open up our title blocks tolerances by simply pressing escape to end the dimension tool. We right click on the drawing sheet and we select edit sheet format. This brings me back and allows me to edit my title block. So if I go ahead and I double click on the note section, I can take, change the plus or minus 10 thou to plus or minus 20. Click back out, and in order to go back to the original engineering drawing, I right click and I hit edit sheet. This brings me back to the original views, and now it's changed my title block permanently. In fact, while we're on the title block, let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the title block here. So I'm going to click on my note tool, go down to the date, click on the date, and type in the date. Now the material, this is a part we manufacture. Therefore, the material callout is very important. So we're going to type in the alloy, 60, 61, then the heat treatment, dash T6, and then go ahead and let people know that it's aluminum. Last but not least, the title is Lathe Project Number 2 Shaft Design Part. And make sure the drawn by is your name. I don't need credit for this assignment. Now, we have a few other things to do before this drawing is complete, and we fully have defined this part in, in two views. So to do that, let's look back at our engineering drawing. We need to specify diameter 1, which is the bushing's diameter. We have to do length 1 and length 2. And then we have to specify the thread. So let's go back first and specify the thread. Then we'll do the diameter and we'll finish up with the last two lengths. So moving back to SolidWorks, if I wanted to go ahead and measure the diameter, I grab Smart Dimension, I grab that line and pull out. What that does is it sets up my diameter right here. And remember, these values are going to be different than what you have. They're not your exact values. And let's say that this dimension was not plus or minus 5 thou. So in order to add a dimension directly to it, we click on the dimension. We take the tolerance from none to the type we'd like to display, such as symmetric. And we'll go ahead and do plus or minus 3 thou. I don't know. Go ahead and look at your design values in your design calcs to specify your tolerances here. Do not just simply copy my 3 thou. At this point, I'm going to drag that off. I'm going to place my thread call out on here. So to do that, I'm going to grab my note tool. I'm going to click my leader line on the thread. And I'm going to type 5-8, so 5 eighths, dash 11, UNC 2A. So the thread callout shows me the thread. I look up that thread size and I figure out the major diameter I need to turn that to. We did that as part of the class lecture. At this point, I'm going to give it the last two lengths. So to do that, I'm going to give it smart dimension. I'm going to dimension from here, from there, to there, which will be length one. I'm going to make that three decimal places, 
and I'm going to give it a symmetric tolerance of plus or minus 2 thou. Go ahead and use your design values you calculated to apply the tolerances. Next, looking at the drawing, length 2 was chained off length 1. In fact, we'll manufacture length 2 before we manufacture length 1. So to show length 2's distance, we're going to go ahead and dimension from length 1's edge to the end of the part. Moving back down to SolidWorks, I'm going to grab my Smart Dimension tool. I'm going to dimension from that line to that line and place the dimension. Notice it's definitely going to be smaller than 1 inch. Yours should be in, in the 900 thou area somewhere. But just realize this is the whole idea is to create the drawing, learn how to design the part based off the allowance and clearance calculations. So move this over, give it three decimal places, and go ahead and change it to a symmetric tolerance of plus or minus eight thou. At this point, we have a fully dimensioned engineering drawing and we can go out to lab and make this part. We have all the specific information needed in order to manufacture this part. So let's review a little bit. Let's go back to the assembly drawing. The whole idea of this assembly drawing is to show how the assembly gets put together, how the different pieces interact with, with each other. So you'll notice the assembly drawing commonly has a bill of materials, which was created with the tables up here at the top. And in the bill of materials, you'll have an item number. On the assembly drawing, you'll have a balloon with the item number in it pointing directly to the part. So you can reference the table number with the actual part in the drawing. Then, the last drawing in the drawing packet is usually a standard part sheet. It lists all the different standard parts, maybe shows a pictorial view of the standard part, and any pertinent information needed to order that part. In between the assembly drawings in the standard part sheet are all the engineering drawings that for the parts your company intends to manufacture. So you'll notice we're manufacturing one part in, in this project, and it's the shaft that you designed the sizes and the tolerances for. So looking at it, it's got everything we need in order to make the part. It starts off with the material down the bottom in the title block. Then as we move through here, it shows the, shows the specific sizes and the specific variation that's permitted in order to make this part interact the way it's been designed to do with the other components. Now, when you're all done, go ahead and press save, save all. And what you're going to end up doing is I like to always save my drawings as a PDF as well. So I go File, Save As, and I pick PDF. Therefore, I can always save this, I can always print this out on any computer that can view a PDF. I don't need SolidWorks to print out my drawings. So if I was to go back, you'll see now with Lage project number two, we ended up having a PDF of our project. Thank you for attending this video, and I look forward to answering any questions through office hours or shoot me an email. Have a great day.